3 p.m. Eastern Time. Happy to be here on this beautiful sunny day in Montreal. I had a few special requests for the live stream today, but we are going to do snakes keeping in, in, uh, in keeping with the theme of animals, wildlife type of thing. And then the other requests, um, let me just get the, I wrote them down. So we had Sri, G, uh, Sri Re, Regini ask for a couple rings. So in the description, I'm going to link up some tutorials for uh, ring unisex rings that could be used as couple rings. I had a Valentini uh, request triquetra jewelry. I have a couple tutorials for that, so I'm going to post those in the description as well. Hi, Amber. And Janet uh, asked for, oh, that was for something different. Janet asked for a uh, idea for making a jig with polymer clay, and I thought that was a brilliant idea. So I'm going to work on that. As she had commented on my video making a, a kind of a jig to make spirals. Uh, so I'm going to work on some ideas for making your own DIY jigs using nails, as I always do, but also bigger shapes with um, polymer clay. I think my sister hopped on. Hey, Kristen, how are you? Hi, Peggy. I'm going to get to the comments after, guys. I can't see them all from here. I see Mirta. Hello, hello. And then Lynn asked for a small uh, five-petal flower with uh, using the jig, so I'm also going to work on that. And we had a request, a couple requests for Halloween jewelry, so I'm going to link up uh, in the description my playlist for Halloween jewelry because I have tons, tons, tons of tutorials. Uh, the one I haven't done that she requests, or one of the people requested, was a, sh a cauldron. I know a lot of people make the cauldrons out of wire and stones and things, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to get to that as well. Uh, to make some cauldrons. Oh, I saw Karen hopped on. Hi, Karen. So let me put the screen, get going on these right away, and then I'll see if I mixed, uh, um, if I mixed up any, uh, if I missed any comments. Sorry, let me just put the screen. There we go. You guys tell me if I'm well-centered. I'm gonna come around here and pull up the video on my computer so I can see what's going on. I'm gonna show you guys also a couple of other projects I've been working on. Uh, videos pull you up here make sure there's no sound okay so we have oh if ever, anybody's wondering a uh, world world peas is my sister uh, Kristen so we're going to get some usernames if your username is not your real name and you want to comment what your username is go ahead and comment uh, I see Christina that's a, a king wild a whole bunch of characters that's Christina hi Christina and beige fox is Karen hi Karen so I think I've said hello to everybody nice so let me pull up the video and see where we're at hi Ellen okay now I have to refresh my page because I'm seeing it from the beginning oh refresh the page and go have to make yes okay so now I can see where we're at. Let me just center this so we can see what we're doing. Here's some sketches that I've done. And I needed some, I wanted to do one with some little beads. And uh, as always, when I'm missing beads, I go into my studio where I have a trunk uh, from my dear friend, Allison. I inherited all of her beautiful beads. And lo and behold, look, was at, look what was at the top of the chest which i'm going to be able to use today so that's allison always has what i need these are beautiful little seed beads so we're going to use those i call it my tickle trunk because i don't know if any of you know mr dress up but back in the day when i was a kid i used to watch mr dress up and he had a tickle trunk with all kinds of craft supplies and stuff so that's super cool so now uh why don't we start with that one that's really just a cute little design uh, or maybe we'll start with this one because it's a very simple one just with a twisted wire and uh and then we're just going to play around and see see what we come up with today i'll just do a few little designs for snakes i do have a couple of snake tutorials already somewhere on my channel so i'll try to link those up as well so let's do the twisty one and we can just get some soft dish wire for that so probably a 20 gauge I'm going to, I'm just going to get some of this. This is bare copper. Is this, this is pretty soft. Let's use the bare copper for that one. And we'll do like a twisty one. Yay, Mr. Dress Up. Yeah, my sister and I used to watch Mr. Dress Up all the time, of course. Uh, he was awesome. A Canadian. 
as well. And uh, yeah, Mr. Jessup was my favorite. And that probably what instilled the love of crafts uh, in me. Other than, I mean, my mom for sure as well. She used to do a lot of crafts, but definitely watching Mr. Dressup uh, inspired me as well. So now let me get this. Ice cream, coffee, loads of whipped cream. Ooh, that sounds decadent. So now let's go ahead and do this guy. And I am going to just start with a piece of wire. I'm gonna make sure I'm centered here. And we can form like a little snake head. You can do um, eyes on it or you can keep it simplified. So say if you do wanna do the eyes, we're just going to bend this here at the end. I'm still, this wire I've definitely cut way too long. It doesn't have to be that long. And I, you can do um, beads for the eyes as well if you want, or uh, actually we could even keep this simple without eyes. Why don't we just keep this one super simple? And, or do we wanna do eyes? I'm gonna keep this one simple. So we're just gonna bring this one down here to do sort of like a, actually I'm just gonna bend this like that crisscross. And then this side we're gonna bring here and we're going to bend this. Mr. Dress Up. Yeah, maybe you could watch Mr. Dress Up on YouTube. I don't know if there's any reruns of it. Yeah, it was a very iconic uh, Canadian children's uh, TV show. I bet there are clips of it on, uh, it was from the 70s, so I bet there are clips on, um, on YouTube. If anybody finds one, uh, pop one in the description. Uh, if, if you have a link to the, to the show, that would be cool. So now we're gonna crisscross this I'm gonna hold this, oh actually, I prefer to do this side on top of that side. It depends on how you like to twist it, but I do prefer to put this side on top when I twist and then I'm gonna hold it. And then you wanna keep these at an angle so they'll twist well. So we're gonna just keep these on an angle and just twist this around. I'm not sure how much I'm going to need. I'm gonna need enough to go around the finger, which is about, let me measure just, just to see. So say I'm doing, um, I divert here, but say I'm doing a size seven ring. So how much do you need to go around the, the ring? That would be good to know. Say if we're doing a size seven, I'm gonna cut that. Okay, we're just gonna cut that one. And then when you open it up, it's probably about two inches, I'm guessing. So if we open that up, let's see how long that is. That's maybe two inches. Let me get a ruler. And I'm gonna check how long that is. So we know if your ring size is about a size seven, that you would need it to be that long. So let me just check. I've got my, I've got my um, measuring tape. Um, Maya, hi Maya. It's 20 gauge wire for this one. So now this one, if it's a size seven, it's going to be like two and a quarter inches. So that's we know for sure we need that much twist. So let's hold this again, and we're gonna do two and a quarter inches of twist, but more than because we want the, the we want the tail as well. So let's just keep going with that. And the tricky part is to keep these out at an angle, so there's a somewhat even twist. So if these stay out at the same angle, your twist is going to be pretty even. So we're just gonna keep going, and we want it longer than two and a quarter, because we want to be able to do this type of thing. No, we're doing it this one, this one like that. So that's gonna be like two and a quarter and then another two and a quarter. So this probably has about has to be about almost five inches long. That's a lot of twist. So that's just good to see what we're gonna do. It's gonna get harder and harder to do an even twist. Some people use a drill. You can definitely like drill, uh, use a drill to do the twist. Uh, Beadlon also makes like a wire twisting device. I don't know if it would work for this project because you have to attach it to the device to get it to work. So let me get my thing again and see how much we've got. So we've got, let's see, from there to there. This is flipping over. So see if we want about five. I'm gonna do four and a half, and then we're gonna see how it looks, okay? So this is like, say this is about four and a half inches, and we're gonna straighten that one out a little bit. Okay, uh, I posted episode six, 
season 17 from, oh, sweet. Oh, 1983. Wow, was he still making episodes in that year? That's cool. Wow, that's really neat because I watched it in the 70s. So there we go. Um, I'll check it out too. A little blast from the past. So now we're going to take this and wind this one around and around and see if we're if we guessed guesstimated well see we didn't quite do enough so i think it maybe should have been more like five inches but we can we can still manage that i'm just gonna hold it here and just do another bit of twist to add a little bit more okay hope i don't scratch it too much and actually if you want it seven you're probably gonna have to do it at six because it's gonna bounce back so let's just do it up at six bring it around because it's probably going to bounce back. Okay, so there's that. That's pretty good. And then say at the end you want to make it look like a rattlesnake or something, you can do that. So all we're going to have to do, and you can maybe hammer that a little bit with a rawhide mallet or a plastic mallet if you want it to be very stiff. So say you want to do like a, a rattlesnake end. We're just going to wind that around, I don't know, five or six times many times as you want. Okay, so we're gonna do that. So there's a good way to end it. And then we're going to take the cutters, cut it, clip it, and pinch this in a little bit. And then if you wanna get rid of this, okay, we wanna cut it, we wanna just cut this one off, this end piece. I'm wondering if we, if we hold this and wind, Carefully so you don't scratch this. If you hold this and just like kind of wiggle it back and forth, it might just, there, that works. And it'll just break off. And then you can always file that bit if you need to. So let's put it back on the ring cone. We're gonna put it back here on the ring cone. Like I said, if you wanna give it a little hammer or something, you can go ahead and do it. But wow, this is super cool. It actually bounced back a little bit more, I think. But you can say it's bouncing back too much. You can even do it like at a, a smaller size and then bring it back and then if we have it like that and now it's a little too much because this guy's but you can also that maybe this one we should bend down a little bit you can you can also bend it down a little bit like that if you want you can just adjust it any way you want adjust that how you want so that's super cool it's like a little twisted wire rattlesnake i like that that's fun so either either have it down like that or you can put it back to how it was. I don't think it really matters. If we put it back that way, we're gonna just make it a little bit bigger. You can play around with it and see what you want because you can also put the head sticking up a little bit too. So there's a lot you can do with that. So that's number one. And now let's go ahead and try the beaded one because that's cool. I might even do some little eye beads. So for that, I've got these cool little beads here. They're pretty, they're almost like a hematite. I should get a hematite wire. That would be cool. Like a, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna write that down to get a hematite colored wire. So I guess they might call it steel gray or hematite wire. I'm gonna get some 20 gauge. I bet Beadalon has that. So I'm gonna check that out. And then now I will use, the other one I have is this really nice antique brass. That's quite nice. I can use that one even though it's not exactly the same colors, it's pretty good. So let's take a piece of that. Um, I'm not sure how much wire we're gonna need. I should measure these wires so you guys have an idea though of how much wire I'm using. So let me go, hey Sharon, how are you? So let's get the end here and zoop, let's take, we don't need that much wire. We really don't need that much, I don't think. So let's do about 12, 12 is probably plenty. So, 12 inches for number two. Amber, you could take that in notes maybe for your timestamps, uh, or I maybe won't put it in the time stamps, but I would put in the description that that would be 12 inches of wire, or I could do it myself. There we go. Okay, so ring number two equals 12 inches, and ring number one, what did we say for the uh, size seven is like 
was it two and a quarter inches, I think? Something like that. Okay, there we go. Hey gal, how are you? Yeah, everything's going great here. So now let's do the head of the snake. So I'm gonna take this guy and bring it down and that way. And we're gonna put some little eyes on this guy. So let's do this. We're gonna bring this one in here. We can make it a little bigger maybe. And I'm not gonna put the eyes like too, too big. I'll show you which beads I have here. So let's have a peek, see? Um, wow, I'm low on beads. Okay, so I have to get out my other hematite beads. I have black. I could do black beads. I kind of wish I had smaller beads now, but these might be okay. Let's see how this looks. The black bead. It's a little on the big side. Yeah, it's a little on the big side. Let's see if I have some smaller beads. I mean, they don't have to be round either. I also have like some little little ones in here. Let me see what I have for here. I have this and those are like the iridescent. I like the iridescent ones. Let me get my little fingers in there. That one's a little big. Maybe this one. I just like the, the, the thing with the iridescent ones is actually trying to find two that match. So now these aren't perfect, but let's try this. So this is like an iridescent bead that we're going to try for the eyes. They're all right. Okay, so we're going to bring this one around down and up. And then this one here, bring that one across. There we go. And this one, you're going to use the same beads for the eyes. Oh, okay. That would be a good idea. That was dumb. Oh, well, I could do that. Maybe we could, maybe we should. Then it would be smaller, right? Let's try. Let's try that. Okie doke. Okay, let me get these ones. I didn't even think about that. That's why you guys are here because there are things I don't think about. So let me get these little guys and see how that's going to go. Yeah, because these are humongous. Let's see if that could work well. I'm going to remove that one. Okay, if we can. Oh, I hope this wire doesn't break after all that. There, I'm just gonna be very carefully, open that up. If we can get around the corner there. There we go. Okay, let's try that, because these are large. These might be a little small, but we can try. Okay, so we're gonna get one of these. Actually, you know what? These might not even fit on the wire. I just thought about that. Yes, they do. Okay, so now let's get this one around here, right around. So when you bend the wire, it gets really hard to put the, yeah, so let's put that one there. It's tiny, but if you wind it with the wire, it should be okay. So we're gonna do that. And then let's do this one. Try to find one that's about the same size. What would I do without you, Amber? Uh, A-S-M-A, -A. hello. Okay, I went to a mini gem show. Woo, that's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of gem shows in Montreal. I haven't been for a while, but there are a lot of gem shows here. Um, there's one, uh, there's a company in Montreal called Crystal Dreams. Uh, they have a, a couple of stores in Montreal, but they also have a really good website. If you guys looking are looking for gemstones and crystals and stuff like that so um, they uh, sponsor a show every year in Montreal which is a really it's a nice one like it's not one of the huge ones but it's a good show so now I've just wound that around once for the eyes but I sometimes I liked going around twice with the beads so we're, these are small enough so I should be able to do that so I went around the front and now I'm going around the back let's do the same we're going to go around the back I might run out of wire at this point, but we're going to see. I'm going to bring this one around up. Okay, so there are the little eyes in the snake. And so now, big one in Texan. February, cool. That sounds really cool. Maybe I should do a trip in February and avoid the cold weather in Montreal because it gets pretty cold. 
in Montreal. So now we're going to take this, bring this one around to the top of the head, and then bring this one down. Okay, so that's the first part of the snake. And then this one too, we're gonna bring this one around here, here, okay, and this one up here. So we're gonna start with that. I'm a little worried I might run out of wire now, but we're gonna see and but maybe we won't so this is what we've got so far he looks a little kind of cartoony but he's kind of cute so now let me just fix that up a little bit there we go just pinch it in so now the idea we want to attach these guys but i need some thinner wire and i don't have much in the way of colors so i'm gonna go for 24 gauge Oh, I have 24 tarnish resistant brass. I did not even know I had that. So why don't we try that? Okay, Beetleon sent me so much wire that sometimes I lose track of what I've got. So I am missing some of my main uh, sizes. So like I go through the 20 gauge wire like toilet paper. So I'm definitely gonna have to get them to send me more of that. And, um, and some of the other like 22 gauge I use a lot. 2018, 18 not as much because I use smaller pieces, but I go through a 20 gauge wire very, very, very quickly. So now what we want to do is start by putting a bead on here and you could show me around. That'd be awesome. Wow, as long as it's not too hot. I'm not a hot weather person. I'd rather, um, crazy enough, have a cooler weather than warmer weather. Not minus 30 cooler weather, but uh, but I can't do like over 30 degrees Celsius, which is, I don't even know what that is in Fahrenheit. But yeah, that's hot. So now we're just gonna attach these wires here and see what we can do. See the easiest way to attach this. I'm just gonna put this one here like that for now, up here. I don't know if we have to actually weave this in or if we can just wind it in I do not like wire weaving. So we're gonna see if we can get away with just doing it this way. And we might not be able to, we might actually have to weave it in a bit. So what if we, okay, maybe we'll have to weave it. If we did that and here, I'm gonna start again. Whoa, okay, let's start again. So I am going to, Take this, open it up a bit. Okay. Yeah, I really am not a, I'm not a wire weaver, but maybe I'll cut a slightly longer piece. Well, I could always add a piece if I need it. Peggy says 86 Fahrenheit is 30. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I, w I thought it would be more in the 90s. I guess I really don't like hot weather. Okay, so now uh, we are going to take this guy and wrap it around here. I'm gonna wrap it around here. So we have like that one full like, like that. And then let's put the bead right on right away. I'm gonna try to smooth that out a little bit. And yeah, 86 doesn't sound too bad, but yeah, 30. I can handle 30 if it's like, if there's a breeze, I can handle it. But if it's like 30 and humid, then I can't. So now we're gonna do this and we're just gonna to try to somewhat weave this, I guess, in place. Not that I wanted to do that, but we're just gonna see if that's gonna work better. So we're gonna bring this one here around. I'm really not sure the best way to do this, but maybe I'll just figure it out as I go. So if we do this one, so I don't want too much wire on this either. It's so around here, but I really want these beads to be at the front surface. So, whoops. Okay, there's probably tutorials on how to do this online, but um, I will figure it out. There we go. So now we're gonna do this. Uh, if there's no breeze, it's way too hot, exactly. So now we're gonna put this one here and just keep winding it in and I am doing it this way so that we can keep the wires separate. I think that's the idea. You wanna keep these wires separate 
So you do a little wind in between each one, but I'm not 100% sure this is the way I wanna go with this because I also could have just wound them around the outside of it. But we'll do a few and then we'll get an idea of how it's actually going to look because if it's not gonna look good, we're gonna just skip it. But that looks, I don't know if you can see that, that looks pretty good and it's gonna make it pretty solid. So unfortunately, um, on my, I mean, uh, on my tutorials, fortunately, I can fast forward when I'm doing this so you wouldn't have to sit through this torture of watching me wind these beads around. So I might even put this at the side and do something else, but you could also go get yourself a coffee and while I wind these beads around, I'm just trying to figure out if I actually like this, but I do, I do like this. I think it looks really good. So I think it's worth it to wind these, to wind these around. I really do think it's worth it. So what I need is to get somebody to do this for me while I do something else. Uh, Amber says it looks great. Thank you, Amber. I wish you were here and then I would get you to wind this while I um, work on the next design because this is gonna take me a little while unless I suddenly build up some kind of momentum and I'm able to do it like super quickly. So, but that's the idea like that. And then you would do, you would do quite a bit of it and then wind it around and then do, well, this one isn't even a ring actually. This one looks like it's more like a pendant or something, but you could definitely do it that way. So let's put that one at the side for now. I might get back to it, but let's try some other ones as well. So we're gonna get back to that one. So why don't we try this one here and I'm gonna get some brass wire, 20, 20 gauge tarnish resistant brass. Okay, um, just make sure to wrap around the starting and stop point a couple of times to secure. Perfect, thank you. Sharon says, right, Amber, it looks cool. Thank you. I got some, got her some square half brown wire for birthday. And she got, yes, yeah, that was awesome. That was really fun. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, I got his little book and was able to kind of figure out some of the wire uh, stuff that he was doing with, with that square and half round wire. That was really cool. So now let's just cut a piece of this one. And this also, I think I've cut way too long, but we can measure it. And it is, like say 18, looks like 18 inches, yeah. So let's just cut it at 18 so we know it was 18 inches. So this is ring number three. I will cut, I will write that ring number three is 18 inches, perfect. I'm gonna take a sip of water. And then we're gonna try that one. So this one, there's like a little fold there. So let's just take this one and fold it in half like that. And you could use your flat pliers if it's easier. So we're just gonna keep this one really simple. And um, hmm, just thinking about how to do it in a way that you can Cause you don't want them, you want them really side by side. So I was thinking like if, you, if they're on top of each other, you could do them both at once, but because they're side by side, it's gonna be slightly different. So let's just go ahead and start one side. So this side here would be around like that, like that, and I don't think of the best way to do this. So if we do this, I hadn't even thought this thought ahead of time of how I would do this. So now we wanna wind it around that loop like that, okay? But then we wanna do the inner one first. So now we're gonna take this inner wire and wind it around, okay? And then we'll take the outer wire and follow the inner wire that's going to be this way. They're, they're like beside each other. Otherwise it's going to be really hard to get these side by side. So then you can adjust that in a little bit if you need to there. 
Okay, bring that in. And then again, we want to do the inner one. So let's do the inner one again. And we'll do the inner one. There. And then this one, the outer one. We'll hold these together and do the outer one. That's an interesting little hack there. Cool. And then we want to wind these around the ring cone. That's cool. You might also want this to be a little more curved so it kind of somewhat curves around the finger. I don't know much, how much you could do about that. I guess if you had a metal ring form, you could like hammer it on the on the metal ring form. But for now, we're just going to do that. Hi, Debbie. How are you? Long time no see. Awesome that you're hopping on. And then now let's get the ring mandrel. If you don't have a ring mandrel, just go through your kids school supplies and take one of these washable markers. Okay, so now we're going to take this and bring this one around, maybe on the size six one, hold it, bring it all the way around here. Perfect. And hopefully it's gonna, it's gonna bounce back. So it's gonna end up being a little bit bigger, a lot bigger, it's quite big. I don't want it that big. So why don't we, I don't know what size this is. Let's just try the, let's try the marker. There we go, we bring it around here. That's a good little size. Okay, so we're just gonna like really pull this a little bit. Okay, and perfect. I'm gonna bring that one in. And yeah, this see this is end up being a little flat. So if you can curve these sides out, it's gonna be better. You might need to hammer it or something. So here's what we have so far. It seems to be holding in place pretty well. And then we want to bring this one up to form the head. So let's do the inner one first. So around the center point of that, I'm just going to bring that one up here. Okay. And then this one too, to make sure they stay together. Maybe you could put it back on the ring cone. Okay. So to hold them together. And then this one goes up. So now we've got these two going up, they look pretty good. And then what we need to do is figure out how we're going to attach that together. I think if we, yeah, if we kind of bring them together and then bring it up, I kind of want to finish it up here. We're going to see how that's going to work. So I'm going to take these, hold them together. If you have um, nylon tip, pliers it might be better if you're worried about scratching them so that one here and maybe I'll just go around one more time to be sure and then that way here so this is what we've got so far to hold them together now we don't want them sliding all over the place that's the thing so maybe we can kind of pinch it in in a way that it's going to hold in place so this is what we've got so far I kind of like the idea of doing little eyes for that so we can see how that goes. And now, hey, Corey. Oh, nice. Nice that you hopped by. Thank you so much. Love the snakes. Thank you. Yeah, so now we're going to take this one and bring this one up here. And I'd like to kind of stylize this head a little bit. Maybe if we bring it down here. I don't want it to look so stiff. And we're gonna bring this one down here. I should actually have a look, like a picture of what the snake actually looks like. That might be helpful. But um, I think they do kind of go out a little bit like that. Maybe more up like that. And then we're gonna do like little eyeballs. This almost looks like a heart, which is interesting because when I grab some beads out of Allison's stuff, of course, she has tons of hearts. She loved hearts. So look at these little cute little things. That could even be a snake's head, this heartbeat. I might do one with that for her. So now we're going to do some eyeballs. So let's do some eyeballs. Let's just make them little though. I don't think the snake's eyes have to be that big. 
So we're going to do it up towards the top. Uh, I'm not sure at what point we should be, but yeah, see, this is already slipping here and that we're going to have to find a way for it to stay in place. So here's one side and then we're going to do the other side. An eyeball. Let me remove this so it's not distracting. I think we're going to have to do a whole other live stream with snakes because I don't think I'm going to even get part way through this list of stuff. But um, that's the way every week. I've, I've Every week I come with a bunch of ideas and we don't even get through half of them. So some of these I'll have to do part two of some of these. And so we're gonna bring this one around here. So now there we have like snake with little tiny snake eyes. I guess you can make them bigger if you want. Snake eyes, isn't that something in rolling dice is snake eyes? Is that twos or is that ones? I forget what that is. Snake eyes, sounds familiar. So now we're gonna bring this one here and hi, Brat Slip Logical. Hello. There we go. Two ones. Two ones. Okay, cool. Nice. Nice. I knew it sounded familiar. The only dice game I used to play a lot was um, Yahtzee. I used to love Yahtzee. Let me know in the comments if you played Yahtzee. And I even made a game for my sister, and I made my own dice out of wooden blocks, and I took pictures of her family members. And each uh, s number was a family member. So there'd be, you know, Patty and Emily, or actually at the time their kids were little. So it was mommy and daddy and, and um, Stuart and Travis and Emmy. And then um, I guess the probably number six was me, which was Auntie Heather. And then you'd roll the dice and then you'd have a chart like in the Yahtzee game. And um, you would collect mommies and daddies and all those types of things. And it was it was a really fun game. I don't know if they still have it, but uh, yeah, it was super fun. So now we're gonna just take this and we wanna just finish this one here. So we're just gonna take this one and bring it, well, we also don't want it to slip. So when, remember the hack, if you don't want it to slip, you take these round pliers and you bring this one around like that. And bongo, that is so cute, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, I made so many arts and crafts uh, when my nieces and nephews were little and when Mimi was little, too many crafts. Oh my goodness, I finally had to throw a bunch of them out. I just had too many. I have some photos that I kept, a lot of photos. And I was, when I first had my YouTube channel, I was doing tutorials for how to make different arts and crafts. Like that's how I got started on YouTube. I did a little bit of jewelry but also lots of arts and crafts stuff, which I've since taken off my channel because um, YouTube was demonetizing channels that were doing kids things. I think they've loosened up their rules by now, but, um, but that was what I was doing at the time. So this is looking super cute, guys. And now I kind of like the idea of doing a little spirally tongue. So why don't we do that? Hi, Myrta. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Kristen says, you think it's at the cottage? Oh, that's fun. Maybe they brought it up to the cottage. The actual Yahtzee game or the one with Patty and, and them? That was, that was so much fun. I think I made another one also for my friend Nadia and Rob and their, and their kids. I'm pretty sure I made them one too. And Nadia and Rob are teachers and, um, and Nadia owns the Viva Vida Art Gallery, which is where I show my work in Montreal. So if ever you're in Montreal, go to the Viva Vida Art Gallery and check out my work. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys what else I was working on. I will show you that. I'll take a, a little uh, interlude after this snake and I'll show you guys what I've been working on um, project-wise. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm not sure if there's this one project that I ever showed you. So I'm gonna show you that as well. So here we're gonna do a little um, spiral. We're going to cut that flush. Bing. And Hubert sees. Oh my gosh, that's what it was. Oh my goodness, you have a good memory because their last name is Hubert. So I called the game Hubert sees. Oh, that is funny. Wow, I'm glad one of us has a good memory. So now we're going to bring this one around. And Kristen and I do art once a week. We Kristen lives out west in 
Canada, so she lives very far, but during the pandemic, we started um, doing Zoom calls and art Zoom calls. So we each work on our own art project and uh, we're on Zoom at the same time. And that's a lot of the videos I put on my Heather Boyd art channel are um, things that I've done while we're on, while I'm on Zoom with Kristen and my friend um, Patricia. So uh, if you guys haven't already checked out um, my art channel, it's Heather Boyd Art, and uh, and I'm actually doing a challenge coming up soon on that channel. I'm going to do a 10 day drawing challenge. So if you guys want to learn more about drawing or or practice your drawing, uh, that's what's going on there. So the tongue looks a little. It's a, it's a little much, but it's super cute. And if you find the spiral is too tight, like there's too much wire in there, there's a little hack. Say I, I decide I don't want that spiral to be too dense. If I can pull it out. I don't want to massacre this thing, but sometimes I just like cut a bit out. Like if I find it's too dense, I just cut a little bit of a length out and then I'll tighten it up again. Hey cat, how are you? Nice to see you. So now we're going to take this and whoops, bring this one around. Perfect. Whoopsies. Yeah, now I've done it like I've made it a little too tight. But anyways, we're just going to bring that in and then I can bring this. Let me just bring this one in a little bit. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I wasn't too smart, but there we go. So now we're just going to tighten that up a little bit. I, sh I should have just not made it as big, but that's okay. That gives you an idea if you want to like make the spiral smaller. So then now we can put it back on the ring cone or the marker to adjust it. It ends up being a little bit big. You can make it smaller if you want, or it's kind of cool that the snake ring would be pretty big. And then these two, if you want to like push them in a little bit, you can definitely like push them in as you need, you know, just adjust it how you need. And now it's probably too small, but we're gonna just see. We can also loosen it up a bit. Try it on. That's cool. Yeah, it's a little on the big side, but it's super cute. That's super fun. Okay, so now we've done those two rings and another one that we're working on. So let's have a look here and see there yeah so there we go lots of cool projects oh this was one I wanted to do around a tree branch I think that would be cute so why don't we try to do something like that and then I'll try to finish it and also in the oh there's so many guys look at this one too with the dangly bead I actually really like that one too maybe that one could let's try that one as a as a little um as a little uh, earring or something, but let's use a thicker wire and do that. Yeah. Go around here. Yeah, Kat, maybe you'd enjoy the 10-day uh, art challenge or drawing challenge coming up. I don't remember. Do you like drawing? I know you paint. I know you paint, but I don't remember if you like to draw, but the drawing challenge, you don't have to have experience drawing. Uh, you just have to uh, enjoy it. And um, we're going to do some really fun exercises. So that's going to be cool. So now, if we want to do just a very basic dangly snake, maybe we can do the, maybe we can do the kind of spirally type head. That would be good. And this one too, this one I could always flatten. Not now, but I, I might flatten it after the live stream. So let's go ahead and do our little spirally thing that we'd like to do. So we just take that and do a kind of geometric spiral. So the tweezer nose pliers work well for this because you need to access like these little tiny spaces. So we're gonna bring this one down and then across. So say we do something like that. I think we're gonna keep it quite small but I want to just figure out how I'm going to do this. Mm, let me try that like that. Uh, maybe one more. No, I think this one's good. So then we're going to take this and do, or 
sort of at the center point, I think we're gonna bring this one down and then around. I'm not quite sure how this is gonna look, but we're gonna try it. And then around. And then I do one like this that's more like a fish, but this could be more like like kind of a a snake idea. And I think if this is flattened, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. So we're gonna bring this one down here, and then let's just do a loop at the bottom. All arts and crafts, yes. Cat made me the most the most beautiful uh, collage a while back. I think I might have showed you guys on one of the live streams. I have that in my studio. I just love it. Yeah. Nice. Oh, well, you're going to love the drawing challenge, Kat. It's coming up soon. I just have to um, get everything going with live wires for the win. Uh, we're still accepting applications for live wires for the win. If you guys uh, are interested in joining that uh, challenge, uh, the, we're going to have 10 participants uh, that are uh, participating participating in weekly challenges. So if you want to apply to uh, be to join the libraries for the win, uh, we're going to be selecting the people. The deadline is the 10th, which is Saturday. So get your applications in. Um, I can get that for you guys. Let me just find it and I will share the form in the uh, in the description. So let me just grab that. I'm going to just that. Oh, the big noisy machine just went by. Okay, so let me grab the application form. Oh, now I can't get it. Let me just see if I can find it. Uh, if not, I don't know if Amber has it. Oh no, my caps lock was on, that's why. So that should, we should be able to get it. There we go. So form link, here we go. So if you guys, oops, if you guys want to apply for Live Wires for the win, uh, Sharon was in it last year and Peggy, Tim was the winner last year. That was super fun and nice. Okay, so here's the application for Live Wires for the win. I'm gonna pin it at the top. Let me just pin it at the top. So if you guys want to apply to join, that would be awesome. So here's just like a little, what could be like a little snake thing. And then we can just dangle a little bead on the end. So if you have a head pin or um, something that you want to dangle a bead with, I'll probably flatten it before I dangle the bead. And there's different, like there's, that one's a little big maybe. Maybe I should get a smaller bead on there like a little maybe a little hematite bead or something might be cute whoops i think we need a even smaller bead or um let's do a, a miracle bead dangling down that would be cute like a little green bead what you guys let me know what color and what size because i have this size or that size and let me know what color because that would be good for the dangling bead on there and then I also was thinking I'd like to try one with this for the head, which might be cute too. Oh, and then there's the one on the tree. Oh my goodness, we're gonna be here forever. Okay. Uh, yeah, Kat, why don't you message me? I'm gonna, I'm gonna email you after this and we can talk about that for sure. Mm -hmm. And then even if you guys don't like sign up and participate in the, with, um, online you can still do the challenges every week you, you don't have to uh, be in the competition at all so anybody can do the challenges for sure so now i'm going to get a wire let's get the 20 gauge wire and do something with this little guy and then you guys can let me know what color for the for the snake's tail for this one and i'm i'll just use i don't have really time to go look for a head pin, but I will just make a little quick one out of wire. So let me just, I'm gonna just cut the end and just wind this around and back. Sorry for the noise, guys. I don't know what they're doing out there, but it's really loud. So maybe you can't even hear it. So um, small one, perfect. Let's do the green one. Yay. So we're gonna do the little green one. 
and then just do a little loop. So cut that to 3 eighths to half an inch. And now we're going to take this and bring this back and forth there. And let's just attach it on there. So we're going to do that. And I might actually remove it and flatten this after. So there's very simple little snake like that. That could be earrings or a pendant. So we're going to put that one at the side and let me see what I could do with this guy. And I like the idea of putting it in a frame too. So maybe that would work if we did that one in the frame. I hope that's going to flip around. We're going to see. So say we got the 18 gauge wire to do like a little frame. We don't want it too big either. So I'm going to grab this small gold, small gold. Oh, okay. Well, I could have done gold as well. That's a good idea, Sharon, but um, I'll just go with the green for now. Um, I, I don't even know if I have gold beads, but when I go to my wholesaler, I should get some, I'm going to actually get, that's a good idea, uh, Sharon. I'm going to write that down, metal beads, metal round beads, because I have to go to my wholesaler soon to get more supplies and I should actually look in in Allison's stuff she might have she might have so now I'm going to do the shape here of the frame bring this one around and I don't want it too big but that should be all right like that so if we're going to take this have this on my little pill bottle handy we're going to bring that one around perfect and we're just going to make a little frame. So we're going to take that, or green, lol. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I do like the miracle beads, that's for sure. So now we're going to cut that, push that one in, and then do the loop on the other side. Now, if you want to go it to go directly on a, a necklace cord without a jump ring, you do it perpendicular. If you want it to uh, attach it with a jump ring, you would do this loop parallel. So we're going to take this one around here, bring it right around, and then bring this one around a couple of times. So the noise outside has stopped, but now the AC is on. So I'm curious to know if you guys can hear all that stuff. Maybe you can't even hear it. So I know when I film videos, uh, downstairs and the AC goes on, I can hear it. I have to stop filming and restart it because it's very, very loud and the mic of my camera picks it up. So here's just like a very basic frame. And so what if we did like a little, a little snake in there? We're gonna try it. So now I will grab some 20 gauge silver wire. Antique silver would be nice too. The hematite wire, that, that was the thing I was gonna ask Beetle on about. So that would be cool. So now I'm going to cut a piece of wire, not too much, about 10 inches. I'm going to grab a sip of water and we're going to attach this somehow. So let's see what we can do with this because this will have to go up. Will that go through there? So that'll go up there. It makes a little line in there. I don't even know if you can put a bead inside there. That might be interesting. I'm not sure what I did with those iridescent beads after all. I can find another one, see if it's going to fit. These might be too big, but let's just check. So would that fit in there? Probably not. It's going to be too big, but maybe one of the teeny ones. Let's try to get one of the teeny ones, see what it does. So if you want to get a bead, a wire, um, I don't even know how you would do that. You'd have to like stick the bead in here. Okay. Pull that out. Stick the bead in this way. I don't even know if you're supposed to put beads in there. I don't know. Does that go in? Oh, went in the wrong way. Went in like vertically. So let's get a smaller one. See if we could put it in horizontally. Mm, this doesn't really match up, but I can try it. Oh, oh, it worked. That's kind of cool. Interesting, I like it. Okay, so now if we wanna do the snake head, oh, it's gonna to have to go down to this end, I think. So let's just try this. So if we put this one here, okay, we're gonna put that one here. This one's just gonna be interesting. 
and maybe bring it halfway and then we're going to bend this one around here we can maybe give it a double wind i don't know if it needs a double wind or not but probably could a hold better with a double wind okay and bring this one down and then if we do down to here it's going to go to there and then maybe we could do the twisty thing might might work better so this one we're going to bring right through here okay it's very cool eh yeah yeah pressure washing <laughs> wow it's a noisy day so now let's just take this and I have other beads like that with like little spaces in the middle. So I have to see what I can do with those. So now let's just take these. We're going to crisscross them. Looks like we're going to have to hold it this way. And then we can do our twist. Let's see what it's going to do. So now we'll do our twist. Twist it around and see what it's going to do. So this is the, if you guys are wondering, this is 20 gauge wire. The frame is 18 gauge wire. And then that bead, if I could, I would ask Allison where she bought it, but she probably wouldn't have even remembered. In fact, maybe I gave it to her. I gave her a whole bunch of beads, so I don't know. But we're gonna see. So there's that. How much do we need to twist? That's the question. So let's do, let's measure it so you guys know. Okay, so that, where do we put our tape measure? Let me grab it. Okay, and see this. I got the tape measure out earlier, like yesterday, because my sister wanted to order something from Ikea and it wasn't in stock in Ottawa. So I checked here and I first had to measure our Yaris, that's two inches, to um, make sure it would fit. And it would fit, So, but by the time we got our butts and gear and got to Ikea, they'd sold out. So, so much for that, that happens. So now we've got this, and then now we want to do the twisting thing. So we're gonna bring this this way. I have a feeling we might have to do more twist, but we're gonna see. So we've got that, and hi, Royal Princess, hello. So now, now we wanna bring this one back. So let's take this one back here. And as always, guys, do what you want with these like tutorials, so if there's, parts of these designs you like, go for it. And if you want to do them exactly as I did, go for it. But often in the live streams, I'm well, often always, I'm just troubleshooting. So if you can think of a better way to do some of these, uh, by all means, go for it. I already see that I need more twisted wire. So let's just keep twisting, keep twisting it around until we have a little bit more. So what did we say before? We had two inches, so now it's gonna be more like three inches around here. And then I'm trying to get it to look somewhat like my picture. And so if we got this, and then we can just turn it around like that. I wonder if it might be better just to bring it around the, should we bring it around the outside of the thing? Might be interesting. Could do that or we could keep it within the frame. Could do that. So many possibilities. I think I like it in the frame and we can always do like a little thing on it to attach it. So we'll bring this one around here. So that goes here and then this one goes around here. I'm gonna need a little bit more. Okay, let's do a little bit more there, there. There, and so that goes here, that goes here. Mm -hmm. We can bring that one up a bit there and there. Yeah, this you might just have to adjust it a little bit. Maybe you want to make that a little bit wider. And this one has to be a little bit wider. I'm gonna bring this one around and then down. Okay, so let's see, that's pretty good. I wanna flatten it out a little bit. And maybe we wanna put another little bead on the end too. So let's just see how that's looking. That's looking pretty good. We're gonna bring it over a little bit more. Bring this one a little more. I'm actually gonna like 
take that and clip it off. So we're gonna clip that one. Clip that one off here. And that one here. And then let's get a little, let's get a little bead for the bottom, I think. So we're gonna bring this one here. This one got a little distorted. So we're gonna straighten that one out a little bit. So if that goes here and that goes here, we wanna push this one up a little bit. And that one, we're gonna bring that one out a little bit more. Okay, around here and up. It's a little tricky to adjust once you've done all this, but I kinda of wanna put another bead on the end. So let's see what we got that's uh, quite small. Let's look in here. Maybe one of these iridescent beads would be good for that. I could put that at the bottom. Stick it here. I don't know if I love that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me just see if there's another one. Brown color maybe. Brown kind of goes with the gold. Oh, that's not even brown. That's like a glass bead or something. It's kind of cool. Okay, so now maybe that ended up being like too much snake. You can also do like little twisty turnies. Like say you wanted to do something like that. You can also like do like, I don't know, do snakes do that? I don't know, maybe not, I'm not sure. The other thing snakes do is like this type of thing, right? Where they're up and then like that type of thing. Now it looks like a duck. It's a duck snake. I don't know if you guys saw my duck nana, but that's like a, a duck nana is a combination between a duck and a banana. So this is a duck snake. I kind of like it. We can make a duck snake. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna torture you guys with that, but you could make a duck snake. So now we're gonna attach this and as a choker, ooh, that would be nice. So now let's just take this one around and around so you guys can finish it however you want but this is one idea to finish it like that and then the other one I didn't do that I really want to do is the snake on the branch so we might go a few minutes over today if you guys have to go don't worry about it so that that always that even fits it doesn't seem to move around much like you could have secured it on e either side but I don't think you have to it's pretty good so there's this guy that looks good. Can you guys see it? I'm gonna bring it up. There's a little bit of a delay. That's cute. And as always, I'll put photos of these after in the um, in the community section. So let's do a quickie branch and see we, what we can do. Nice, thanks, uh, Kristen. Awesome. So now we are going to take this, cut that, and have a sip of water. Mm. And I'll do this uh, branch somehow. Oh, I always struggle with these branches. Maybe I'll try the branch in a different way. I always struggle making these branches. So let's try something different. Um, I think a twisty branch is better. So I am going to just do this. I was gonna like do a coil, but coil's not gonna work either. So we're gonna just do this. So this part would go, um, like put a jump ring in there. I'm gonna make sure I have all these pieces at the side to show you guys after. Okay, and then now we are going to, if we do like a little thing like this, like a little branch thing. Oh, I think I had a better idea. Let's get another piece. I should have maybe done them all at once. Um, if I could do that like that we can try it if we add another piece around here and then this one we can like that this is more like how you do like a tree type of thing oh that might have been good too to have that like that just do that. Mm, okay, I'm just 
can do this one. I don't know if I can bend this one back after. We can try to make it a little bigger. Let me just play around. Anyways, if you guys have a better way to make a branch, go for it. I'm just going to play around with this and then see what we can do with it. Okay, I'm going to go like that. And then this one, do, 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 like that. So we can do like that. And then... This one ends up being, so that would be like a, put a jump ring in there type of thing. And then this one, should have maybe done it like a little, probably should have done this a little bit longer. We could just try it like that. So if we bring this one up here and just going to do like a little, a little loop in this one too. So we're going to bring a little loop around. Every time I make one of these branches, I make it slightly different. So this is today's version of the branch. And we're going to, how am I going to do that? Maybe if I do it this way. I just was wondering how I would bend that, but that looks pretty good like that. So we're going to take that and then I'm going to clip that one off here. So then we still have this type of thing. Um, and then this type of thing. Whoa, this is really weird looking, but that's okay. So now we're gonna go down here and then how are we gonna finish those off? You could just like even file the ends if you want, or we can, just trying to think of how I can make them look consistent, but, or maybe just sometimes what I do is I just take this if I want it like a finished end, but I don't want like a big loop, I just take that and like really pull it like super tight and then clip it. And then Medusa, ooh. So now we're gonna put that there. And then that way there's like, it's finished, but it's very discreet. So let me just get that in here push that in there just to get the end in. And then that way, when you see it on this angle, it doesn't look like there's a loop there, but it does look like the end of the branch is finished. So that's a good thing. So we can do the same thing here where we take that and then you just like really give it a good tug so it makes a closed circle and then you clip it and then when you push the end in, it's very flush. It's not going to scratch, but yet from the top, you can't even see <clears throat> that there's a loop. So that's a good little hack. And then let's do one more. So we're going to take this again, bring it around here. And diamond back rattlesnake. Hmm, cool. Yeah, rattlesnakes. I did a drawing for rattlesnake. Well, the rattlesnake is basically this type of thing with a little like thing on the end. So um, that when I used to do snakes, I would just do it like that. Very, very stylized with a little coil for the rattle. And there's, yeah, if you look at clip art or photos of snakes, there's so many different possibilities. So that's this is kind of interesting. I like this, but if we have this one kind of up like that one, wait, and that one up like this way. So now you could dangle these, make this, you know, you could do whatever you want with this, but this is the idea. So say you were going to do like a, a branch. This is one of my best branches yet. So there's a branch. And then now we want to do the snake going around the branch. So this is where if you did a wire woven snake, that could be super cool because you want a little bit of thickness to it or even like a flat wire snake might be interesting. Let me just grab if I have some flat wire. Maybe I could do something with that. Um, what's this one? Is it any wire? Uh, let, me, let me just try to find some of my flat wire. Maybe in here. Yep, I might have some flat wire that we can use. Beetle even has some really nice textured flat wire, which is cool. 
so let's see what I have in this bag. This is random thicker wire that I have. I think I have some flat in here. I have that one. And I have, this one's like really thick. But I'm thinking maybe we can do something with these just to give it a little bit of dimension. So this one's like way too thick for that. So scrap that. And this one is a little better. So let's try this one. My paper shifted a bit. So yeah, what if we use this type of thing and we wound it around a few times? I'm not sure how many times. So I'll cut this about maybe four inches-ish. I'm not sure, this is like three millimeter size, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so now let's get some silver wire, but maybe the 22. Oh, I'm really running. I wanted to send Kristen some of this, um, but I'm really running low. So I think I'm gonna have to get you some, get some, order some other of that. So let's try, we can make it two tone and put some gold. So now we're gonna get some 22 gauge gold, just for fun. Put this one in here, bring that one around. And yeah, we're definitely going over time. I won't have time to finish that one I started, but I'll finish it and put a picture in the um, community section. So question here is how are we gonna do the head? So the idea is I wanted to have this as sort of a base. Now what I might do is do the Put a bead for the head, but just like a very small, discreet bead. Oops, let me see what I got. Okay, like this size, I think, the three millimeter size. If I had one the same size as this, it would be good. Or maybe, look, I have these that are nice too. I have these that are quite nice. I don't know that the size is good. This is like a faceted bead. I love the, the little faceted beads. Oh, wait, what's this? Wait a minute. I like that one. So let's try that and put this one in here. Stick this one in here. Okay, so this is gonna just be a very stylized head. And I'm going to take this and just wind a wire around here. So we're just gonna wind the wire around and maybe even do it like, so it looks a little bit pointy at the end too. Okay, so we're gonna bring this one up here and make it a little bit pointy so it looks like the nose of the snake. Okay, so we're gonna bring that one around here. So this makes it look like the head of a snake and then what I was thinking to do, and I do not know if this is gonna work, but would be to wind it around this to see if we can get it to look like the body is a little bit more substantial. This is a shot in the dark. So what I should have done is cut this one a little bit longer because it's not gonna be very long. But if we just put this one down a little bit, I can always add a wire after if it looks good. Okay, we're gonna bring this one around here. Maybe get this one out of the way. I want to make a snake and spider. She'll have a meltdown. Yeah, there's some people in our wire makers group that are afraid of spiders. So I actually don't post spiders in that group anymore. And if somebody posts pictures of spiders, I don't comment on it because I don't want to bring it up on the algorithms. So in full disclosure, if you post spiders in the wire makers club, uh, I will not be commenting on it. Um, but I, I don't think it's my place to ban spiders because there's people with different phobias that, you know, we can't uh, decide like we can post one thing and not another. So, um, so that's it. Some people are deathly afraid of spiders and even snakes, hopefully not snakes because, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that, but this, I'm trying to do a crisscross thing. I'm not sure I like that. So let's bring it back. This is where you're, you know, you can just use your artistic license and see uh, what you wanna do with this. I find this band to be very plain too. I wonder if we could texture this up a bit. 
I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this. I might not use it. So can you like, you can kind of texture it up a bit. As long as you don't like break through it, you can get your pliers and, and texture it yourself. That's kind of cool because just the flat wire doesn't look too good, but you can like get your pliers. These are round pliers and just give it a little bit of texture. So that's interesting because it's aluminum, right? So aluminum's very soft. Just be careful not to cut right through it. This is thick enough that I don't think we're at risk of doing that, but this is interesting. And the other thing you can do with this is if you have a rolling mill, you can buy steel plates with texture on them and you can send this through a rolling mill and, um, and the texture will go impress into the, um, the aluminum, which is really interesting. So that's cool. It's the first time I've ever done that. Uh, this, that's why I like these live streams because we learn all these things as we go. Like I wouldn't have necessarily thought to do this. I had thought about the other beetle on a uh, flat wire that is already textured but this is really interesting. Look at that. It's like super cool and it's making it like curve out like that. I'm not sure why, but that's okay. Cool. So now we are going to see what we can do with that. So can we use this now? Because I, I didn't like the way what this was doing. So maybe this one I can just like cut off this end. Let's just cut off that end because I don't want to crisscross them. And this end is too short anyways. So let's just clip that one off. And then maybe, maybe we can get this to sit on here somehow. Let's see if we can do that. If we can get it to sit and not fall off, like this should go here. We want this to sit at the end. And then let's just try to wind this one around a little bit. It might be interesting. There we go. And it kind of like blends in with the lines that we did on the snick. So let's try it around here. And they don't have to be really even. It's kind of cool. And in the worst case, we've learned something, right? So let's just try this. We're gonna wind it all the way around. Okay, around and around. And we get to the end because we're going to run out of wire. Oh, bye, Mirta. Thanks for hopping on. Yeah, we went over time today, so you guys have to go. Don't worry about it. So now here's uh, just like that. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we can see. And I probably should have mm, thought this through a little better. So if we're going to bring this one around, I'm going to need my pliers because this is hard now. So if we bring this one around here. Okay. And then if this is the snake, I think it's not going to work with this flat wire, but we're going to try it. So we're going to just bring this one out like that. And then this one, maybe we should do it this way and have his head sticking out this way. That might be better. Yeah, it might be, or maybe there's just too many too many branches here. I'm gonna see what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring that one out here and here because I kind of like it out that way. But if we could do this here, but the, mainly that's because that's how I made it. So now my head's stuck that it should be that way. Yeah, let's just keep it that way. So now if we do this one here and then we want to wind this one around, okay, and we want to bring it around here. Yeah, he's coming down a little bit, so that's good. And then we're just gonna loosely, very loosely, wind it around a couple of times. That's kind of interesting. It's around, it's coming around here. And I think we should go around one more time. We're gonna run out of the gold stuff, but that's the idea around here. I can add more gold wire. So we've wound it around three times. It's just like, Stretch it out a little bit more. Okay, around here, stretch it a little bit more. 
So this is what we have so far. And then the, for the tail, let's try to follow the, this uh, part as much as possible. So we're gonna just kind of go like that. And then maybe I'm just gonna do it like that because I'm not sure how else I'm gonna do that without it like looking funny. So if we go out that way, how would, I wonder if it would work if we cut this on an angle so it, it kind of went down to nothing. We can try that. Okay, it's gonna be sharp, but we can always, we can always um, uh, file it. So we're gonna cut this on an angle. There, that's interesting. And there. So yeah, it's kind of cool. It's gone out. It's kind of very interesting. It's gone out to a little point. We can file it. Let me get a file if I can find it. I have some files here somewhere. Um, I have the reamer. I don't think that's gonna work, but I have the file. There we go. Well, thank you to Amber for suggesting doing snakes today. I didn't, I have, my mind was blank. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And she suggested snakes. So I thought that's a great idea. And Amber, if you have to go, I understand these later ones might not uh, suit your schedule, but let's just file this so it's not sharp. Okay, we're just gonna file that out. Maybe we didn't even need to add this gold wire, like it's kind of nice. Just the, just that is kind of interesting, but then we did need the gold wire to attach the head. That's the only thing. So, but you don't have to do the gold wire on it at all. I'm wondering how it's going to look, if, how it would look without it. I'm not gonna take it out now, but I might try it after. But say, like if you wanna keep it consistent, you could add some more gold wire on there if you want. But that's it guys, so I'm gonna show you what we've done. Let me get some paper and, oh my pleasure, wow. So let's get this. Uh, oh, no worries about the timestamps. Amber always does my timestamps and I super appreciate it and there's never a rush for that. So this is what we've done so far. We did the snake on the branch. I will take photos and put them in the in the group so you, and the community section so you guys can see. Here's this this ring, like that. And then this, wow, we did a lot, guys. This ring, that ring. Uh, maybe I can put these on here so you guys can actually see them. I don't even know if that's gonna show very well. But we're gonna do that and that. Okay, so here's some rings. There's that. And then this one that we didn't finish but that I will finish is that one there. So let me know in the comments, which is your favorite. I'm gonna to try to bring these up so you guys can see them. There we go. You guys see these? Let's see. Let me know if you could see them. Let me know which one was your favorite. Oh, no, I didn't bring them up a bit. And, uh, and I'll put photos in the community section and keep working on some of these ideas. I'm gonna flatten that, um, the simple one with the green bead. I'll have to, I'll remove the bead and I'll flatten it. And that's it, so I'm going to flip the screen. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you what I'm working on. So just quickly, I made this like sample for a pizza for this guy. He didn't like that one, but then I made it simpler and made like a little pizza. And then this funny little sculpture of a girl eating a hot dog. So this is what I this is what I work on. And when I'm not doing live streams is one of a kind little sculptures for people. So that was a special request from him. And uh, and there we go. So let me turn the screen around and say goodbye. So there we go. And I won't necessarily be able to see your comments now, but I really appreciate everybody hop. Oops, oh no, this thing just came out. Okay, hang on, sorry. Let me fix this up. Oh boy. Okay, I pushed the wrong button. You know, I wonder if I could do selfie mode. There we go. I can do selfie mode. My thing came out of the tripod, so sorry about that. I'm not even sure where I'm looking, but thanks everybody so much for watching. And um, yeah, happy crafting. Thank you, Amber, for always moderating. 
and timestamps, no rush for those. And be sure to apply for Live Wires for the win. Uh, I will put the um, link in the description of the video. And uh, I'll put all the other links that we talked about as well. And be sure to join the Wiremakers Club on Facebook. Have a great afternoon. Thank you everybody for hopping on and we'll see you soon. Bye.